Hey guys, this is George with Thought House Music. And originally I wanted to do a lesson on the Hirajoshi scale and how it relates to the pentatonic scale, how to phrase with it. But I think I'm going to save that for tomorrow. And today instead I'm going to look at a much simpler concept, and that is how do we modify um, chords, maybe like simple chords, and uh, um, create other shapes. And so it's, I don't want to use the word lazy, but it's kind of like the lazy way to um, expand our core, core vocabulary. And I don't think it's really lazy, it's just, it's more intuitive. And sometimes that, that works better than sitting there and memorizing, you know, a bunch of chords in a, a logical order. Plus it's more fun, you kind of discover sounds this way and you may end up with voices that you wouldn't have otherwise considered, like if you're doing drop two or something like that. So um, if we take a look at a chord like B minor, this is a basic chord, B minor. Right, A shape, bar chord. A shape, B minor. So A minor, right? A minor shape, boom, A minor. This turning into a bar chord, second fret, turns into B minor, okay? And if I play this chord, and then all, all I do is take my index finger and move it to the sixth string, third fret. Now I'm playing a G major seven. Okay. So now that's cool. And then if I go back, right? So I go back to my original B minor. And I move my pinky. I basically swap my pinky and my ring fingers, I end up with an E minor chord if I play the open sixth. Yeah, uh, E minor seven. And here's something cool. If I lift my ring finger, it turns, on, turns into an E minor 11. Okay? And those are, all those are just sounds that you're missing. Don't worry so much about the name. E minor 11, it's a cool chord. Or uh, E minor 7. Then, um, what else can we do with this? So I have this. If I do that, I'm just basically playing an A minor 7 with, a, with the 7th on the bass. Or, you know, if you don't want to go into all of that, you can just go to a B over A. B minor over A. Whenever you see a slash chord, like B minor slash A, the way that's read is not B minor slash A, but B minor over A. And all that means is you're playing whatever the chord with the note on the other side of, of the slash on the bass. That's what that means. It's basically an inversion. So B minor, B minor over A, okay? And then if I do this, uh, if I take my ring finger, this is gonna take more movement, but if I take my ring finger and I move it to the fifth string and I lift my middle finger and do this, now I have a B7 sus. So it could be a B7, B, I'm sorry, not a B, an F sharp 7 sus. And then I could resolve if I wanted to a plain B7 by just putting my middle finger down. Okay. What makes this interesting is that now I have chords that are related to each other because they, there's very little difference between them and that's the dirty little secret. And it's not really a secret. Is that chords that um, have... Uh, a lot of notes in common are typically related to each other, so they go well together. For instance, I can take this, this B minor, and I'm just gonna, when I mess with my middle finger, so I end up with a little bit of a melody, so I'm just strumming a chord. So if I do this, B minor, and then maybe I go to the G, right? So. string, I don't know. Then maybe I'll go to the E.
gotta move to some somewhere else. I want to like a D major chord. But you can also play. So a lot of the times you don't have to just open a book and study a bunch of chord shapes, but uh, um, just grab one of the basic chords that you already know. You know, you can do the same thing with a C chord, right? Humble C chord. If I uh, add an F sharp and a D at the top, it turns into an F sharp. I'm sorry, it turns into a, a C uh, at nine sharp eleven. And if I don't, if I want to get rid of all that extra wording, then I just add a B to it. And now have a C major seven sharp eleven, C major nine sharp eleven. Sorry, C major seven sharp eleven. I would just add the E. And you see, you can just experiment, and by the time you're done with it, you end up with a shape completely different than uh, what you already had. So just don't just learn your shapes and stay there, but experiment. What happens, you know, if you put your pinky somewhere? If you have a free finger. What happens if you swap a finger and you put it somewhere else and see what happens? Um, at best, you come up with new chords, maybe an idea for a song. At worst, you learn something new and train your ears. So have some fun and uh, just experiment with that. Take it as far as you want. See you guys next time.